Hello. So, as you may or may not know, I've always been really into murder creatures. Just in general. I always loved them, like, as a infant, and I was basically just, like, living the dream when they got really popular in, like, the mid-2000s, early 2010s. And obviously, you know, I was really into, like, H2O and Secret Life of a Mermaid. But what really interested me in particular was the merge handler and the idea of making your own tail. So much so that as a kid, I put together this little booklet that, as you can see, 55 tail designs. And um, my dream was to have like just a big copy of these in like a boutique somewhere where you could go in and pick the one you wanted and I'd make it for you. Um, but that was not really tenable because I was like 11. So it sort of just sat around, and I did end up making one tail out of this book. It was the Mahi Mahi tail. This was my favorite of it. Um, and I actually have the old tail skin right here. I think I was about 12 when I made this, obviously with help from my mom. I don't remember exactly how much of the part of it was mine versus hers, but as you can see it has a big dorsal fin, has little side fins up here, and on the cap, it has these spots up and down. I remember I definitely sewed these. Um, you can tell because they're not sewn on super well because I was 12. It also has on the bottom a little bit of design here to cover up where my ankles would be. And the back is this dark green color, so it mimics counter shading. Um, I got a decent amount of use out of this, but Unfortunately, it was not too long after this that I started having some gender and getting too dysphoric to swim. So I didn't do it for 10 years. And recently, well, I have been getting back in the habit of swimming, which has been very nice. But it's also been making me think about this old book. And so, I have been recreating it in this one. Um, I haven't gotten all 55 redesigns done yet, but we're making progress. But I made my way back to the Mahi Mahi tale, and I've been thinking, you know, this tale, it looks definitely pretty good, especially for the time and the age I was when I made it. You know, things like extra fins on fabric tails and super complicated designs were not super common in fabric tails, especially homemade ones around that era. And at the very start of this book, in the very front page, it says, all made with printed material. And I was thinking, well, we now live in the future, and that is something that is readily open to have done. It's to get, you know, go to a website, get your design custom printed on a piece of fabric, and I was thinking, why not try to do that again? So, um, this new design is what I'm going to be working off of. It is very similar to my original one because since this was like my tail and my persona, I'm very like attached to it, so I didn't want to change things too much, but there's definitely a bit more detail in the rays and the uh, gradient of things um, that are basically just going to be what I can do now that I have access to some printing technology. So let's get started. So I'm just going to get all my fin on and sit on the paper, and then you're going to trace around me. Okay. That's it. So for my patterning, I'm using the tried and true method of just tracing your legs and fin out on a big piece of paper. I also am here trying on my tail, the old skin that I have, and making note of what parts fit and which parts need to be adjusted and adjusting my pattern from there, which was definitely a huge advantage in the patterning. Uh, definitely a tried and true method, but it did lead to me being a little bit concerned about the fit before I was able to try it on. So if you're a little bit more meticulous and tend to worry about things, I recommend doing or of a pattern based on your circumference of your different measurements instead of just laying flat. Um, so I'm just sketching out the fins on the side here and then making measurements of everything and just a little note version so that way I can then transfer those measurements to a piece of graph paper, scale down and scan that in to start drawing my design on top of which you'll see in just a moment here. I'm also making note of the exact measurements of my monofin because I definitely wanted to make sure that that fit. It is a very large monofin, great in the water. So here I am just holding up those little scale measurements that I made. Obviously these aren't the ones that I scanned in, but these are the notes I made. If you're wondering the exact dimensions of the tail, you can take a gander at those here. 
So here is the digitized version of the uh, graph paper scan that I've mentioned. And this is the art program that I worked in. I just used Fire Alpaca, which is a free digital art workstation. I would definitely highly recommend it. There is a lot you can do with it. So I'm just starting out by basing out in the sort of base green that I had and editing the fins on the side to look a little bit better than my scale drawings, just making sure everything looked just perfect here. I also decided to do some very sharp rays on the side, and at this point I wasn't planning on actually sewing them, but I did end up sewing them that sharp in the end, which I think had a really cool effect. So to start off, I definitely, one of the main things that I wanted to do, both on my original tail and this tail as well, is I wanted to make sure that counter shading played a big part in the design of it. I come from a marine biology background, so I definitely have a lot of sort of like anatomy and natural colorations in mind, while also <laughs> having my preference towards neon colors as well. Overall, the time for the design took about eight hours, which has been condensed to about eight minutes here, so every second you see was a minute of time elapsed. Uh, one thing that I will mention though is that I'm not sure if it's the art program or it's the fact that I'm using a rather old computer but it would definitely lag a lot because this was such a huge file because I had to make it to size. While the uh, graph paper was scaled down to fit on a sheet of graph paper so I could scan it in and have the dimensions be correct, since Spiral Packer's grid system isn't super great um, and I prefer working traditionally anyways, but I did scale that end up then to my exact measurements so that way when it's printed at 200 dpi as per the website's request, uh, it fits exactly, so that's part of the reason why it kept crashing. It's such a huge file, I couldn't even send it over email. For the fluke, I was definitely very inspired by tales such as H2O and Aquamarine. I've just always loved the way that they look in particular, more so than a lot of the more fantastical thin fluke shapes that you see nowadays. I just sort of love that very straightforward crescent shape with the bony rays in it. This is also here where I start bringing a lot of blue and aqua into the bottom of the tail. Because originally on my tail and in the redesign that I made, it was just sort of green and yellow on the front. But I really loved adding those little shocks of blue down at the heel. And it definitely helps add to the illusion of just sort of it straight flowing into a tail fin rather than there being straps and a monofin of heat there. Here's where I start lining out what I want to do with these spots. Uh, definitely took a while for me to get everything blended in a way that I like. So here I'm starting with the very just sort of straightforward dots. I did copy them just so that way they all looked exactly the same because I think, you know, there's no point in making things harder for yourself. Especially since they're all going to be slightly sized differently and I did the highlights and shading individually so none of them are going to look exactly the same. Here I was experimenting with spots because Mahi Mahis tend to have little flecks of blue and yellow in color throughout but I ended up not really super liking how that looked so I just went with a more sort of subtle pointillism almost effect. Here I'm just making sure everything on both sides is exactly symmetrical and adjusting the levels a bit. And there's again that little shock of blue. Uh, here uh, for the scale pattern, I didn't want to do sort of the harsh sort of scale overlay that you see in a lot of fabric tails. I wanted to go with something a little bit more subtle, and I was wondering how I was going to do it and capture the depth of the scales that I really wanted to do. And I was at work thinking this, and I looked at the back of my glove that had the scale pattern on it, and I thought that it would be perfect. So I took a photograph, and I put that in here, and I'm just adjusting the layers and everything, and making sure it is the exact size that I want, and the exact opacity that I want and setting it, I think, to overlay. You can probably see a little bit better than I can. Uh, so that way I can have the scale texture just on these sides where it's the more darker green, so the part where it's sort of more lit up looking, you don't see the scales as much. I definitely wanted to have that sort of gradient effect from the front to the back. And so I copied the background and scale design over to the back of the tail, so that way the seams line up exactly. The back on the original tail was just a plain green, but I definitely wanted to add a little bit more detail and interest to this. So I'm adding that scale texture there and buffing it out so you don't see any of the 
sort of lines where it's different images. Uh, so I end up adding this sort of dark hue, very dark compared to the rest of it, along the very back of the fin, or the tail, where the dorsal would be. And I ended up adding a little bit of shock of blue there too, which you can see as well. I definitely wanted this to be a design where there's a distinct front and a distinct back. I guess you get more of your money that way, instead of having it be the same on the front and the back. I decided to add more of those dots on the back there, because there wasn't a lot of visual interest going on. Uh, this is a little bit more intense right now, I thought it looked a little bit too almost like confetti, so I did end up toning it down a little bit. But there are still some dots on the end, and I'm glad I brought that in somewhere from my original inspiration of it all. One of the things that I'm really happy about is just how much detail I was able to get, both just in the designing process and also how it translated over to being printed and eventually being swum in. I also love how the colors are very natural, you know, blues and yellows and greens. It's one of my favorite color palettes and it's also very, sort of blends into the water while still being very vibrant if the water is clear, much like a real Mahi Mahi. So the dorsal here went surprisingly fast, I think it only took about an hour to do. Uh, I did uh, end up doing, one of the things I do really frequently in my art now is using the star tool to set to overlay to do sort of a sparkle effect. Because on the original Mahi Mahi tail, it was made out of this sort of shimmery, sparkly lycra that they actually still sell at Joann's. <laughs> it's exact same too, I even checked. Uh, and I took a picture of that here, and I'm using it in an overlay to get some of that sort of sparkle, and you can see there my original seam lines as well. But I definitely wanted to pay homage to my old tail through this one as well. Just adding some more uh, rays in between the bony rays there. Just adding them as much detail as I can because I'm only working on this on the size of a relatively small laptop screen, but I wanted to be cognizant of the fact that everything that is being drawn here and is being, going to be printed at a much larger scale than what I'm seeing at right now. So my attention to detail here was definitely like one of the things I was most focused on. Here are the cat fins, which also went surprisingly fast. Uh, just doing some yellow rays with green fins and bringing in that dark blue again for the shading with a bright white highlighter. While these fins were the fastest draw, they were definitely the hardest to sew since I ended up having to do each of them by hand in order to get all the detail that I really wanted on these. While I definitely think it did pay off, I did end up having to spend an entire week to do each fin. <laughs> so here for the hip fins, these surprisingly took the longest out of all of the fins I'm pretty sure except the dorsal because I was just really fussing with it, trying to figure out how exactly I wanted these to look. Because it's a bit more of a less straightforward shape, it's a lot more smooth. I definitely wanted to make sure that it both matched the rest of the fabric and also still stood out on its own because it is a smaller fin compared to the others. One of the effects that I wanted to keep in mind for the fluke as well as all the fins is sort of capturing the illusion of light shining through the very tips of the fins here. So here I'm just copying it all out. I did eight total of the calf fins since I wanted to have a spare pair uh, that could work as sort of bracers but that ended up not working out but it did work out because it was great to have a bit of spare fabric that I could experiment on when my machine ended up acting up. This is the website that I used, it's Contrada.com. I used their custom printed Sport Lycra. I print ordered a print sample first, and I would definitely recommend their services. The print was beautiful. So, I just got home from work, and the sample of fabric that I ordered, it's arrived. So I'm very excited to open this. Okay, it's in here. It has a nice amount of stretch. The edges don't fray, so that means I don't have to finish my seams. I gotta do some double checks with the ruler to make sure the measurements that I ordered are exactly one to one because, you know, when I'm printing this full size, I want it to be the correct measurements, or at least hopefully that I got my scale right and everything. I also want to run a few tests and see how this looks underwater or, you know, when wet, and oh, it's so good. I love that it's like stretchy, and sublimation printing means that, like, it's not like cracking or anything like that. Oh, the amount of detail that I got that comes through is so good. 
The color is also like so vivid and so bright, which is exactly what I was wanting. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to be hanging this on my wall when I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm definitely going to be filling my complete order from this website. The shipping is also like crazy fast. Like. I ordered this on Thursday, and it's Tuesday, and it just got here, and it shipped from London, so that's a really quick turnaround time. I'm also going to, on the final order, I'm going to set the background color to be sort of a, a green that matches, um, not exactly, so I can like you know see where to cut out everything, but so that way if I like sew something and there's like a little bit of like the edge poking through, you won't see it, because I'd rather like I'm going to try to line it up pretty exactly my uh, sew lines on the edge of this, uh, instead of just, you know, I know sometimes people will just like sew over the edges a little bit uh, and have a little bit of the design inside, but I, my design kind of goes to the edges of my tail, um, just on account of how I designed it. Um, so if the background coloration with the, if like seam allowance showing through is an issue, I can always like make sure to note that next time I'm doing a design. Um, that's about the only concern I have other than the fact that things are pretty tightly spaced on this sheet. Um, you know, I measured it out, I should have, you know, at least a half inch of seam allowance on all of the edges everywhere. But if not, I am fine cutting into uh, some of the fins in some places around the edges if need be, because those are going to be sewn into the fabric anyways. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that. But those are the things I am looking out for. Um, it also says that, you know, it gives you little washing instructions for this, but this is definitely going to be something I will hand wash only because, you know, you want to last a long time. So, time to go around some tests with this. I'm so happy with how it looks. This means that I get to order the full thing tonight, and it's early March still, so if it, if it, if it goes anything like the sample did, then it will probably get here before April, which means I'll have more than a full month to work on the sewing, which is great. <laughs> See you when I order the full size fabric. Hello, it is now a few days later and my package has come in the mail. So I'm going to go and open this. Okay, let's get this spread out. There's not even enough room in the office to get it all, like, laid out flat. <laughs> I was so afraid it was going to be like way too small, but this looks like it should fit it. Let's test it with the fin. So it'll need to be a little bit stretched out to fit the mono fin entirely, but the place where the foot pockets meet definitely line up really well. Um, so it also lines up pretty well lengthwise, so it'll just be like a very tiny bit of stretch on the sides of it's the fin itself. Which is not a bad thing, because that means it'll stay in place instead of being loose and like, you know, floppy. Next is to try laying on it, seeing how that fits. Obviously it's going to be kind of hard to tell because that part is meant to be like, stretched, but... Let's just do a quick little comparison. Oh, it lines up perfectly with my knees and my calves. It's obviously going to be pretty stretched around a butt, but like, you know goes for any tail. It fits. <laughs> I am so happy with how this looks. Oh, the fins are so much bigger than I thought they'd be. Which is great because I love a, I love a big fin. It looks so cool. I really love all the like subtle scaling on the back too. Like, I, I feel like the back is underrated. I know I'm the one who like literally designed it and like there's not much going on back here but I really like how it looks. Also the fin I'm using for this is the Fitness Rapid, because that's the one I've had for the past like 11 years, and I love it. So here is the dorsal piece. Oh, those look so cool. I know, I literally made it myself, but like, I, I think it looks really cool. I really love like the shine on this, 
It looks very fishy. It looks very good. Everything looks like it has a pretty good amount of seam allowance. There's some corners where it's a little bit tight, obviously, but um, it's nothing too terrible. I'm so glad it's like the right size. Like, the calf part especially, like, this part from like here to like here, like, fits like perfectly. Like, my legs like just sort of like sit over the wires, which might mean it might be a little bit baggy in that area versus a little bit tight up top, but again, it might even out, we'll have to see. Uh, especially because on the calves there's going to be these fins attached here, so there's going to be a little bit more fabric, a little bit more bulk there, so having a little bit of extra room in this area specifically is probably a good idea. Because there's also going to be fins up here, um, I'm not sure how well the waist is going to fit, I think I'm going to be probably testing this, just like pin together out to see like how the waist part fits. Because I'm not super confident that this band will fit very well. Um, it might be a little bit tight, which is, you know, why I left some extra room here and here. Because that part I was just sort of planning on like, folding down and using sort of like a waistband so I don't have to have like elastic in there. But I bought elastic just in case it ended up being too tight and I ended up having to dig it down to where it curves out here a little bit more. This fabric also feels really, really nice. Like it's really smooth and it doesn't seem like it's going to be super likely to like kill and get beat up. I'm excited about this. I'm very excited about this. On the uh, topic of swimming in this though, I haven't yet figured out what I'm going to do for drainage holes. Um, in my old tail, I never had any sort of drainage. It was just completely closed. And I never really had a problem with it. Like, yeah, the edges would like bulk out, but I wasn't really ever too bothered with it. This, since it's going to be on camera, I might be a little bit more concerned and want some holes in there. But I don't want to do an open-ended fluke either, because I've always just like personally not been a big fan of how that looks. So um, I don't know if I talked about that yet or not already in the video, but I'm going to use a zipper into the side here, just so I can get the bottom fit in and out easily without having to fold it and damage risk damaging the fin or the tail. Um, because that was a problem with my old tail, is that like it's because my original tail is made for the thinnest wave, but not the thinnest rapid. So like it was like a real squeeze trying to get the rapid in there, like bending in half and like, trying to like, get it through and then like shoving it in the like, hole that is way too small for it. I'm um, hoping to not have a lot of those problems because this is actually made for the thinnest rapid this time. Since it is already 4.45, I am probably going to do the sewing on this um, on the weekend and not on Monday night. But I'm very excited about this. It is March 13th. Um, my due date for this, like in my head, is um, ideally before the 1st of May, and at worst before the end of May, where I can film it and get a video put out on the 31st. Because the video is going to go out then, regardless if I finish this tale like way before then or not. But I am so excited about this. Like it looks so good that like. I don't really have anything to like, say about it. Like, I mean, I've been talking for like 10 minutes. But like, I'm like so happy with how it turns out, like, so far. I don't really have any sort of things where I'm like, hmm, I have this to keep in mind for next time, or like, I wish I'd done this so far. I, again, I do just have like the print, I haven't sewn it together yet, I haven't tried it on yet, I haven't seen it in the water yet, but like, just on the print itself, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's just sort of like so exactly what I've envisioned, like that. Like I don't have much comment. It's just like, yeah, this is what it's, this is what it looks like, you know. Also, you may notice I did not end up doing the green background. I kept it white. I decided to do that both because I was having some website issues. I like couldn't order directly. I think the image was just a little bit too big for like my computer or whatever connection I had to handle it. Um, customer service was great though because like, I they just. Like I sent them an email, they just put the order together for me. So that was great. I had no problems there. I would still recommend the service. Um, if you are going to be uploading a big image though, don't hesitate to send an email. So that's why I left the light on was with because I didn't put in the order directly. Also because I need I want the designs to like line up like exactly where they are. And I figure if it's like one shade of green for the entire thing, even if it lessens the blow in some places, you're still gonna see it just as much as you would white in others. So if I do have any white sticking through, I'm probably just going to 
use a little bit of fabric paint and just sort of blend the edges like to the color that it needs to be in that specific area. Because if like I had a big chunk of like green sticking out at one of the edges here where it's like bright yellow, you would still be able to see it. Probably even more so than you would be able to see it if it was just a white edge here. So if anything, white will just make it easier for me to spot those pieces that I need to do touch-ups. But also I apologize for the fact that I'm like not in frame right now at all and that I haven't been this whole time. I'm shy. Hello, I am now at the sewing stage. Apologies for the thinking in the background, it's the dryer. So I've got my fins all cut out, and I have the first piece all pinned together and lined up and ready to sew. So let's get started. I'm only going to be sewing the outside edge since the inner edge. I'm going to be open to flip it right side out. Also, I'm going to do some bowing, which I have zip ties under that pile of fins there. So, let's get started. I'm incredibly nervous. I'm starting with the cat pins, specifically because I have an extra pair that I was going to use for bracers, but if something goes terribly wrong with my first run and I have to scrap the bracers, it's not a big deal. So that's why I'm starting here. There's all the other pieces I don't have to do with itself, so when everything goes okay. Let's go. So after a few hours of trying to get this to work, you can see it is dark outside now, um, I have discovered that this thread is not suited for machines. It just gets twisted up and tangled and unravels. So I'm going to have to find some new thread, um, which is going to take a few days probably because I have to find a sewing shop that's around here and then I have to find the stuff that I need, and I need to go there, and it's just very frustrating, because I've literally been working at this for hours with like many, many, many sort of like test things, just trying to figure out what the hell is wrong with it, and it literally just like is not working. So um, I have however found a workaround that'll work until I can get some new thread, and I've discovered that if I use the hand crank, it's slow enough that it doesn't get tangled, so I'm going to be cranking away here for the rest of time. Hello. So it is one week later, and I used the uh, hand crank method that I described from the machine, and um, it didn't turn out too good. It's has like this big white stripe on this side where it wasn't quite lined up. Um, it's very lumpy and bulky. I don't have any of the details of the spikes and um, you're not going to want to see what the inside looks like. Yeah, it's, yuck it's yucky. Um, so that didn't work. <laughs> um, I was very devastated. So um, I decided it was not tenable. Um, my machine also kept birds nesting, so I took it in, and apparently it is just not a very good machine, and it had some troubles with getting bobbins spun properly, so that's why I kept birds nesting. So hopefully it should be like good for now, but even if it was working perfectly, machine stitching is not going to work, because it just sort of makes this very smooth, and that's not what I was looking for. However, I did try hand stitching because that's more sort of my wheelhouse, it's on a better path. And I very much like how this came out. Look at that. <laughs> Look at those spikes and rays. Um, it's obviously still a little bit like lumpy and like all over the place right now, but that's just because it needs to be ironed and I'm also going to be boning this. So all these little spikes will stay out and look good. Um, I really love like the texture of it too. Like, they feel so, like, fun to just sort of, like, run your hands along the wrong way because they, like, stick out. Very cool. I'm very happy with how this is turning out. Um, so, let's get this one finished up today. 
Uh, it's Saturday now. It is the March 25th. Um, so I'm going to try to finish this one on camera right now. And then I will try to get the other cat fin done before April. And then we can start on just sewing it all together. Um, obviously I still have to do the fins and the boning and that, all that first before it gets assembled together. But hopefully, hopefully, not really, wood, um, that will be the end of hand stitching. And then I can just do machine stitching because the cat fins are the only one that have those like, ridges. Um, it is very hard. <laughs> I don't know yet if the uh, subtle spikes will be worth it, but I'm really liking how it's looking right now, so let's get her finished up. Unfortunately, it ended up a little bit out of focus and out of frame as I ended up working, but I wanted to make note that the stitch here I used was a ladder stitch, so that way the thread is invisible and it sews up nice and evenly. So, uh, I've got this all done. Uh, I left my scissors upstairs, so I can't <laughs> cut it off, the thread off right now, but uh, it looks so cool. I'm so happy about this. I really love all the little spikes. You can't see it super well because, you know, they need to be ironed, but I think it'll look great once it's finished. So, um, I also wanted to mention that I'm not going to really bother with trying to seam rip this and how to pair for the bracers because it's just such a mess and it's very time consuming uh, to do the hand stitching, but mainly um, it's not out of laziness, it's out of the fact that this is way too long and big to be a bracer because uh, I didn't think about the fact that my forearms are not the same size as my legs. So um, maybe that can be another project, maybe next day. But I am very happy with how this is looking. So, hopefully, when I see you next weekend, I'll have both pairs of these done, and we can get sewing on the hip fins, and maybe even the dorsal, and maybe even boning, if I'm lucky. <laughs> see you then. Hello, so it is the next weekend, and I have finished both of the calf fins. Uh, you can definitely tell which one I think I did first, maybe not from a distance, which is good. But up close, you can see that the first ones, the rays are a lot more like lumpy, whereas by the time I got the second one, look how sharp and precise those are. Beautiful. But obviously, like, I don't think I'm going to be redoing this one, because like, they look both really cool from, from a distance. So I am very happy with how these came out. Um, and I'm now incredibly nervous, because it's time to move on to the hip fins which I'm going to try to do my machine. So I've got them all pinned up and I've got the edges outlined so I can sew them up. So I'm going to be doing that today and also then sewing up the dorsal fin, which I have behind the machine over there. And hopefully I can get both of those sewn up today. And then also I have my little test cap fin. I want to use this to test how I'm going to do the boning channels just to see if I like how they look. You know, if I want to fill every single ray with like zip tie boning or just every other one or what I want to do with that. So that is the plan for today. I am <laughs> very nervous, so let's drive right into it. <laughs> finished the whole thing in one day. I had a little bit of trouble with the machine, also the camera cut out at some point, I'm not sure exactly when. Um, around here, which is sort of beat the fabric, so I've got a little tiny bit, I'm just gonna hand sew up, but like, oh my god, it's... <laughs> Hello, so it's Monday afternoon. At some point last night, my camera battery died. 
I'm not sure exactly when, but I did finish both the hip fins last night, and I really love how they turned out, and I'm also in disbelief that I finished two fins in one night after spending literally an entire week on each of the calf fins. So I'm, I mean, obviously there's a difference in detail, but I'm like so happy that these turned out. Um, they were very bulbous before I ironed them, but now that I did, I, they're looking just how I wanted them to. So, I have got my machine threaded with a bobbin in a blue color, and last night I also went ahead and got my dorsal fin all pinned together. So, <laughs> it's literally about as tall as I am which will be very fun. So I'm going to start sewing on the dorsal fin and I really hope that this works. Okay, this one looks exactly the same as all the other ones. It looks perfectly fine. Let's see how badly it looks on my piece this time. Okay. I increased the tension, and now it's stitching normally. So this is backside. And I'm about to run out of film. So truly, that took me an entire almost half an hour. So the TLDR of it is that the machine continued to malfunction and I got so frustrated I basically had a breakdown. So I went to the sewing shop again right before it closed, having completely forgotten that apparently the week prior when it broke I was like, oh I'll get new thread. I completely forgot that I'd planned to do that. So I bought some new thread. It ended up working, but I was a little bit not feeling great so I didn't do a lot of talking to the camera or describing what I did. But basically for the rest of the day I ended up sewing the dorsal fin together and sewing some test boning channels, which I'm doing here. Just seeing how they look. I'm using this dark blue thread and I ended up really liking sort of that color, but as you can see here one of the things I had to keep in mind was that it can get sort of mismatched if you don't pay attention to which sides of the fabric are a little bit more prone to be more towards the top and more towards the bottom, so that's definitely one of the things you want to keep in mind. Here I'm testing out the boning channels using zip tie because I didn't want to use the actual artificial boning, I wanted something a little bit more flexible and a lot more lightweight. I accidentally put them in <laughs> little fin pockets there, but there I'm testing out how they feel and I was planning on testing out like the whole fin just and like cutting it, but I ended up really really liking how that initial test looked so I decided to go ahead and start sewing the boning channels on the dorsal fin, which took a great deal of time, but not nearly as much time as it took when the machine was malfunctioning. It was luckily really smooth during this session. You can see I flip it over each time and that's to make sure that I'm sort of within the tolerances, if you will, of each ray since it is a piece of fabric, you can't ever get it you know, exactly matched up one to one. Um, unless you were going to pin it all, and I was not going to do that <laughs> because I was already felt like I'd wasted so much time on all the fins already, so I was really just trying to sort of rush through this part here. And also it's just pretty easy to check and be like, okay, I have to sew a little bit closer to the edge on this side and a little bit further away from the edge on the other side of the ray. So that's definitely something to keep in mind if you do end up falling through on this boning method. Speaking of, I don't know if I've ever actually seen anyone else doing this. If they have, I have not been aware of it, um, but definitely tell me who they are because I definitely really love the effect that it had. Because one of my biggest pet peeves and why I decided to do boning in general was with my original fin, the dorsal and the hip and calf fins would just move however they wanted and that always bothered me so much because there were lines where the bones should have been and just seeing like all those sort of like quote unquote bones move and like be floppy really just annoyed me. So that was some, one of the biggest sort of modifications to the process here that I kept in mind. 
And overall, I really love both the weight that it had and the way it makes the fin sort of move through the water. It's really sort of natural and almost feels reminiscent, especially on the calf fins, of how silicone tails move, which I'm really glad I was able to do. I definitely recommend this boning channel process because sewing the bone with boning channels itself is a little bit tedious, but I would definitely say it was worth the work and it really only took me about two sessions to do all of it. One session to do all of the sewing of the channels and then one session to get all of the bones sawed and filed into place. That being said, it was definitely a longer session. And now you're treated to a minute and a half of me complaining about the project that I made for myself. Eight done, nine left. I am getting tired. I want a break. But like, I'm so close to being done. There's eight minutes left on the camera. I'm gonna go a little bit into the next time slot. Oh, it is 618, so I think I'm going to give myself like 10 more minutes into like the next camera so that we set up the events to go so that so I can get through that. So thirsty. And I'm also this is I took off swimming today to work on this. And I, <laughs> this is the first time I've missed so in months because I, last time I missed it was because I was sicky. Ugh. But the rec center closes at four, so I wouldn't have been able to go either way because I had to go to the Easter thing. But like, <sighs> it's so sad. Boys should not have to work 40 hours a week. Boys should get paid to sleep and swim. I'm stalling. So I have reached my 10 minutes into filming point that I thought I was going to stop at, but I literally only have one and a half left, so I might as well finish and then also do my one test with the hip fins. So I'm gonna do that one. Last one, but I think the battery's done. So yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to get uh, some of the hip fin on camera because I would rather just do it right now and see if we can the camera and charge up. Hello, so this weekend, um, it's Sunday now, because I <laughs> didn't feel like doing it yesterday, I'm hopefully going to finally be done with the fins. I, I feel like I say this every weekend for like the past month. It's only mid-April, <laughs> but it feels like I've been on this forever. But, today I'm going to be boning the fins. So I've got my zip ties here, I've got a file here, I'm going to be just sort of Finally, the edges of them because they're rounded on one side but not on the other, and I don't want to have sharp plastic edges that could possibly lead to pointed holes for things. So, I'm going to do a little cast of file now because I already cut out what I'm going to be using for my hip fins uh, last weekend because I just needed to test how I was going to be boning those, and I just found that a sort of strip just going along the bottom half of the edge looked the best or else I ran into problems with it bending it out of shape. Um, I'm hoping on the dorsal that will be too much of a problem because these boning channels are much wider so hopefully there will be room for them to go in sort of like vertically so I can, you know, not have to just sort of try to bend plastic in the way it doesn't want to go because for the hip and calf fins it's much tighter boning because they're much smaller fins. So yeah, really hoping that this file works so Let's do that over. Okay, so that wasn't too hard, but now the camera is rounded. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but yeah. 
and time to do this like 50 more times. So yeah, here's a bin that has been boned versus one that hasn't been. Uh, this one that I twist around, it sort of has a bit more weight to it, sort of keeps its shape a little bit more. Imagine it going through the water, whereas this one, it's very, it's sort of, I like the difference. I'm hoping to have, with my other ones, boning more along like, the entirety of the ridges, but since these ones are kind of strangely shaped, uh, it just looks kind of weird if I put boning along the whole way. So, let's go. These are also pretty small, so they don't need to be boned as much because, you know, they're gonna keep their shape pretty well, because they're right at the hip, they're gonna be just sort of going straight down most of the time, so just a little bit of weight to make them look a little bit more realistic. It is so rich. So I've only got about a minute left, that means I've been filming for about 25 minutes, and just in that time I've gotten both hip fins done and about half the dorsal fin done. So I am very happy about the time that I'm making. I think this looks so sick right now. Like, oh, it is so, like, dimensional and textured and heavy. Like, it's not, like, heavy, obviously, because it's just, like, fabric and, like, chip bags. But, like, I love the weight that it has. I love how it's, like, moving. It looks so much more like a real fin than it does just like over here where it's just like flat. I don't know how much of it is showing up on camera, but you know, you'll see eventually. So yeah, gonna start with the next peak. It is done for real. So yeah, if we look at how it moves, it is much less floppy. It's floppy at the bottom because it's, you know, the smaller bones, but this definitely moves more sort of like a sail than like if I fold it, it folds like along those bends. I love that. I don't know if you can really see the difference that the ridges make when they're raised. I promise in real life it is making a huge difference. And it's like that on both sides as well. I'm gonna start right at my waist and go all the way down past my feet a little bit. Make them tip through on my tiptoes. Then it's right about at the base of there. So they'll be right about at my heel. And hopefully disguise my heel a little bit when I'm swimming as well. I don't super care about my heel showing or monofin showing. I really think it's part of the aesthetic, honestly, but it will help the size it, if that is something you're concerned about. As a viewer, <laughs> this is for me. So each cat fin has 17 rays, so I'm going to do that twice.
That took about 15 minutes. That is not a bad time at all. That is literally half the time that I was expecting. So that is very good. Um, this is obviously going to be pretty straight when I'm sewing because it's going to be against my legs, so it's going to be more moving more sort of like this. I definitely love that it's more rigid. Especially this part here at the end, because this tendril I can compare to the non foam one. Otherwise, it's just sort of like crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, I love, really thought that worked. Because now this tendril looks like it has a bow in it, it's about in a way. And all the boning and all the fins are done. And it is so light outside. That is a win for me. It's a little past six. I started running around 4.30, so about an hour and a half to do all the boning. That's definitely the shortest weekend time I'm putting to do since I started this project. I am feeling very burnt out from it. I'm very nervous about next week. I want to do the whole thing this work. But I think it's just because I've like, you know, been working on it so long and like really hard too. <laughs> like I haven't filmed everything that I've done for this project and I've already filled up like a whole memory card just with like the sheer amount of like hours that <laughs> I put into this. So I'm scared. So yeah, I am very how this all turned out, but I'm like really nervous right now because I'm thinking too much about like what if it doesn't fit. So I'm going to clean up this mess and also take a shower to get all the like plastic dust off myself. And I will try to not think about the fit until next weekend when I'm actually doing it. Hello, so it is the next weekend and it's time to finally start assembling the tail, the fins are all done, except for being sewn off. So I've went ahead, I have this invisible zipper here, I've got it pinned, I'm going to go ahead and sew this on, and once the zipper is done, then I'll be pinning together the fluke, and hopefully finishing that up. Um, for the drainage holes, I've decided I'm just going to leave sort of about like a little like quarter inch, half inch holes a few ways along the bottom. And I'll probably just like hand stitch the edge like to the inside so it doesn't like bust open when like the water's like flowing through. You don't have like bits of scrap showing through the holes. So yeah, let's get started. There we go. That is half of our invisible zipper gun. Listen to that. Perfect. So I have got the flute all pinned together, and I've also marked out, I'm not sure which one on camera, but I have eight little marks here for drainage holes along the bottom of the flute. Um, another thing, um, you can't really see through the fabric very well on camera, but I can see it pretty well in person. And, like, I know it was, like, vaguely inspired by H2O, just, like, my design of it, but now that I'm seeing, like, it all pinned down in front of me and hanging on the table with all the, like, lines, it's really, really giving H2O, but in a way that's, like, making me really happy. <laughs> so, I'm really excited.
So, that remains. Aside from, you know, a little bit of decision to finish it up, the fleet is done. So, yeah. Make it see where I have my little drainage holes that I'm gonna take care of sewing the excess in, on the inside. Alright, so it's time for the cap things. So I've got a fun little bit of pinning ahead of me, and I will see you when that is done. Okay, so I've got one side pinned together. Uh, again, I have this in the section open here that I'm going to do by hand, just so it's less confusing. Um, there's a lot of fabric in here, but it's all pinned together, and it's looking so cool. Just like, look at that. So, time to go ahead and stitch this part. Now, for a moment of truth, oh, at least it looks really, really cool. And I don't see any other sections where it's showing. And look how perfectly these things fit together. Oh, my tail. At the end of the day, we can all admit that this looks sick as fuck. I know I said I wanted to get that other calf fin done tonight, and usually I would just push through it. But I'm going to give machine a break. I think that might be part of the problem. I think machine. I might have just needed a break last night because I've already finished uh, that top section. Hey. It's still like messy, you know. Yeah. But it went so much faster than it did last night. Mm-hmm. Alright, so I've got the other top half here pinned up, and I'm just going to go ahead and sew it down. And then that means I can try it on with my monofin in, and I'm done for the night. I'm leaving the waistband open because I want to try it on first to see how it fits. So, time to trim the access. Then I will get my fin on and try it on. And then we can see what this tail is going to look like. <laughs> because it lines up so well. 
then here's what the zipper looks like. And also, so we don't have to do its tightest point. It can stretch, so I think next week in the waistband, I'll just sew these two sides in together, and that should be enough to keep it tight. So I don't have to do any of the plastic. <sighs> also, in the shower last night, I tested all the drainage holes, and they all worked perfectly. Also, there's just that big bunch of drainage holes in my straps, because I'm not <laughs> strapping right now. Yes. I'm so relieved that it fits. Yeah, I will see you next weekend for <coughs> All right, so hopefully this is going to be the last day of sewing. Um, first, just going to start with just finishing up the last couple of inches of the waistband. Same on this side looks good. Same on this one. Nice and we got some really good stretch to it too. All right, so I'm gonna turn this back right side out and try it on my waist real quick. It's obviously sitting a tighter than it would than when I'm swimming in it because, you know, obviously I, it is dry and I'm wearing thick fabric to sweat pants underneath it, but the waistline fits over, over everything and it's also pretty tight to get on, but not like uncomfortably so. That will definitely work as a waistband because this is not going to be pulled down any. Like, I don't want to pull all the fins, but like, yeah, that is not going anywhere. I love the weight that the fins have and I love the stiffness that these ones have down here. Very excited to see this in the water. Now, it is time to do the dorsal. So, it is all pinned on and it is now symmetrical on both sides. I love the movement that it has. I love, like, rigidity. I can't really see, but it feels like it's sitting right in the middle. So let's turn this inside out, sew it up, see how it looks. So there's this part here where it did not catch the fabric nearly at all. I have to say I'm growing suspicious of this method because I think if I just cut it and pin it, I'm going to have a much easier time sewing and it's going to look neater in the end than trying to like fold it and stretch it and switch it like this. So I think I'm going to flip it back inside out or right side out, trim where I need to, because otherwise I think I'm just going to be turning it inside out every two seconds to check if it's working or not and then seeing that it isn't and being like, oh, what now, you know? Alright, on this side it looks pretty good, except for the spot where it's not sewn, obviously. Same on this spot, except for the part that was hand sewn up here. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with this top bit. So on this side it's good, but on this side it didn't go up high enough. But I can just sew another line on that or like thick lady down here at the bottom. So just a little fix down here at the bottom, and then about six inches of remedial work up there.
done. I will see you in the review. When you're on a holiday, you can't find the words to say. All the things that come to you, and I wanna feel it too. On an island in the sun, we'll be playing and having fun. And it makes me feel so fine, I can't control my. And so after many months of planning, it is all done. I am immensely happy with the results. The one thing that I would note though is that in some of the shots, I did not have the tail pulled up all the way, which was not a fitting issue. It was just, I should have gotten some less bulky swim shorts underneath it, but that's very fixable. And I'm overall very glad that it all worked and held together and everything. I have it hanging up now in the closet next to my very first tail skin. Uh, which is an old Hermatchka, and then next to that is my old Mahi Mahi tailskin, and now is the third edition to my collection, the current Mahi Mahi tin that I just made. Uh, it is immensely satisfying to see it all lined up together. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my much longer than usual video. Be sure to ask me any questions you have about the tail down in the comments or wherever you're seeing this, because next month's video I'm planning on just being an AMA about this project because it was so big and took up so many months of my life and I've been doing it in the background for a lot of months now so I'm really happy to have that really big product out of the way and sort of just have some time to focus more on the art that I'm putting out uh, week to week. So yeah, feel free to ask me anything about the tale and I will answer your questions in next month's video. I'm going to see you have until the 15th of June to ask me questions, and then after that I'll be filming the responses to all of those. So yeah, thanks so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, uh, and follow me for more content like this. Bye! I also will just say as a disclaimer, I did see a YouTube video um, where it was like, oh, you can use neoprene and aquarium silicone to make your own silicone tail. And I ended up getting a whole bunch of neoprene for this before pretty quickly realizing, wait, that's a bad idea and I don't really trust this. So um, 
If anyone needs like three yards of yellow neoprene, I'm your guy. So that was my phone. Honestly, the fact that the waistline goes up so high, I'm half thinking instead of just folding it down, um, that is an option. But I could also just tuck it up into my binder. Who needs a blended waistline when you can just tuck it into your top? <laughs> Scary. Scary? It's scary. It, it looks like it is like... <laughs> a taxidermic skin? Yeah, like like you're about to stuff that thing and not, not it on a wall. Look what you're creating it. <laughs> it's my, heavy. My boy. My boy. So. Thank God my boy.